one Lord. He just said there's actually three of you, but you're so unified. You're so pleased to life that you can act as one. There really is three, but you act as one. Therefore, it's one God fully close to three acts as one. Sounds good. Very philosophical. It's May 11, 2020, about 5.30 p.m. And I'm back in the Duck Mountains of Manitoba, heading to McGaw Lake one more time. And then from there, southeast five kilometers to a lake I'm now calling Flower Lake. We used to call it Mystery Lake. I got TP Creek behind me. I'm at um, a cabin that I have a, quite a few years of history coming up here. Couldn't ask for a better day. And I'm just grilling up some one last meal before I head out on my adventures. It's May 12, 2020. For the first time in my life, I'm on McGaw Lake in the Dark Mountains of Manitoba. Filming with a GoPro and a Sony Handycam. It's a perfect day to be out here. I'm in the shallows of the south end right now, working my way north, measuring depths along the way. And keeping an eye out for any little bit of wildlife I can, I can find. This is an incredible moment in my life. Coming to this lake for ages and never getting out on the water. And I finally have changed that with this kayak. So here's the famous leaning birch that's been here at McGaw Lake ever since I can remember, since about 2001. Hangs over the lake in kind of a cool way. Up the hill there's two birch and then there's a younger spruce. And in behind that younger spruce is an even younger spruce. And then there's a cluster of three aspen or poplar I believe. And in the middle of that is the buried treasure for flower so we'll just follow up from from here so leaning birch so I'm up at that younger spruce and then there's an even smaller spruce right there Here's that younger spruce, the smallest one up here, I think. And then right beside it, we have a cluster of three aspen and two birch there. And under, under that pile of rocks, and this chain is the buried treasure for flower and Angeli.
Not hard to make fire in here when you got birch bark everywhere, cattail fuzz, dead grass. You want to get a, the smallest point of light possible, put it on some dead grass. I am clearly on an old logging road, which would make sense. There was a mill on the south end of McGaw Lake, and the logging went all the way to Three Way Swamp and beyond. So I'm pretty happy to finally find this well defined old logging road. The age of the trees in here varies from 40 to 50 years old. Well, my first moose shed of the, of the trip so far on day three, day one of hiking out in the bush. I'm at three-way swamp and I figured Pilia woodpecker. I figured I'd have a good chance of finding one of these and I did. Now the challenge is to carry it with me for a long time. Well, there's, there's two. I'm in the main part of three-way swamp where three swamps have merged into one bigger swamp. And I'm debating whether I want to take those sheds or leave them behind, because it's a, a bit of a hassle to carry them around, plus the camera. back out in McGaw Lake watching the sunset. And then I'll have to head to shore, set up my tent, or build a shelter. I'm at the Salt Lick, that's straight south of the Big Ravine in Duck Mountains, sitting on the, the big lichen rock kind of a, a landmark for me. And I'm just watching the last few patches of snow kind of melt away in the rain here. Um, I've heard about seven different species of birds just right here. Seen a pileated woodpecker. Saw some hooded megansers this morning. Haven't been filming too much because I'm still scouting out, trying to find the best way to get to a, a lake that's my main target.
back at the Brush Creek cabin. Just making some mashed potatoes here. Here's Flower Lake. Well, since I broke my tripod again, I have to film the more fashionable way. Crossing a beaver dam here. Was hoping to get a an old school shot of me walking across the beaver dam so that I can compare it 20 or 50 years later. Let's see if this beaver dam is still here. I've been attempting many times to catch hooded magansers on film where they're just acting like I'm not around. And I've been sneaking up on these ones for half an hour now and just spooked them away when I pulled out the camera. So I did get a pair, two males and a female um, at Three Way Swamp uh, a couple days ago. So that's about the only footage of them I got so far. Oh, there's a giant leech. Back at that little cabin I found cooking some craft dinner here. Doesn't get much better than this. Talk about running into luck. Once you see something like this, it's pretty hard to resist. But it sure beats building a shelter and sleeping under a tarp trying to stay warm all night. So I won't have a problem with that, but I will have some issues with all the mouse droppings in here. the finishing touches here. Sure don't expect to eat like this on my bush adventures, but when I do, it always tastes 10 times better than if I was at home. Hi Flower, if you're watching this, you're just about three years old. Next week is your third birthday. Did I say three weeks? Three years old. May 29th is your birthday coming up. And I wanted to get this one last trip into the Duck Mountains before we come back and celebrate that birthday. So, every step I take, I'm um, extra cautious, make sure I don't twist an ankle or blow out a knee, so that I make sure I make it back for the party. And hopefully, one day in the far future, 10, 15 years, that you can also come out here and see the places that I see now. There's a whole world to explore, and there's a lot of places to see in the Duck Mountains of Manitoba. Hard to say what they're going to look like by the time you're old enough to come out here hiking. But I'm sure they're still going to be magnificent just like this. And same to you, Anjali. Your birthday is October 3rd. You'll be turning one year in a couple months, one year old. And I also hope that you get the chance to come out and see the Duck Mountains of Manitoba someday as you build up confidence, work your way into these places. I've already hit a, buried a little bit of a treasure at McGaw Lake there that you might have seen earlier in the video. So, that's some incentive to go and find it. Speaking to you from the year 2020, I can tell you right now, this is an incredible night 
just sitting here by this cabin I just discovered south of Three Way Swamp and just letting the nature come to me. That's one of the best pieces of advice I could give anybody. You can bushwhack all you want and you will come across amazing things along the way. But sometimes just sitting by a beaver pond, you got beavers coming up 10 feet away, chewing on some logs. Got a white-breasted nuthatch working on a tree. Um, Hoda McGanzer's landing on the pond. I've seen river otters on this trip swimming up the creek. Um, I spooked a black bear earlier. Kind of huffed and puffed at me for a bit and then ran off. I never felt in any danger. Um, cow moose coming down the ravine. Ruffed grouse. Um, there's some wood frogs crackling away back there. The first mosquitoes have emerged from the swamps. Um, it's nice to see them again, but also nice to see them in very low numbers as they're not quite full-blown at in attack mode yet. So that that's just a sample of some of the nature I've seen out here. I'm desperately waiting for the fiddleheads, which are ostrich ferns, waiting for them to poke up out of the ground so I can start picking those and they taste just like Brussels sprouts. Morels, I've been searching and searching for those, but I'm just a little, little bit too early. They could pop up any day though. Sheds, I like to sell those make some gas money along the way. And I did find three sheds so far, but they're one heck of a challenge to get out of here. As you can see, I'm kind of scratched up here due to um, carrying sheds. Early, earlier in this trip, a couple days ago, I was had a moose horn on, my, on, my, on the back of my neck. Then it slipped off, and one of the points went right into the Achilles tendon on the back of my foot so that kind of took me down for a bit luckily it was nothing major and then the next day I started to get the feeling back and be able to put full weight on it again so that was that was good good and bad but yeah lots of lots of things to see here sure beats um the city life I'm a little bit worried about sleeping in a mouse infested tiny little cabin there's got to be a dozen mice in there, but I'm just going to wrap myself in a sleeping bag and a tarp, kind of protect my face with a, with a toque, and wear a pair of gloves. I'm not sure if the radio is going to give me nightmares or help me to sleep better. Picking up some weird stuff here. I'm miles from home. Uh, but it feels great. It really feels great. Um, it feels like you're not trapped. We can so often can uh, do a little trip with friends or bandmates, and we, you know, we keep our social distance. It's 9:30 p.m. The wind has really picked up here. And the last thing I need is another 2012 blowdown storm. Kind of. Kind of staying out and about until I know what's going to happen here with the weather. Hoping things die down soon so I can sleep. Just don't want to be in a cabin surrounded by very large spruce and aspen that could blow down very easily. I'd rather be up and about and watching so I can get out of the way of any hazards. Not much I can do when I'm in a deep sleep and the wind picks up like this so kind of just have to have my fingers crossed. But I hope this is a quick blow over for half an hour so I can sleep with confidence. What am I supposed to do now? I'm about to call it a night. How do I keep, like, hoping this as hoping as it doesn't would. get too cold so I can't make a fire in this cabin. And with a bit of um, multiple attempts, I got CBC yeah, radio on. So I'm looking forward to hearing the news for the first time in five days. Kind of curious how. Everything's going with coronavirus, probably not very good. I've got a, a beautiful outdoor view here, sitting here. And I'm in the middle of Duck Mountain, almost as remote as you can get. So it's, it's pretty cool having this front row seat to all the nature around me. Beaver Pond outside and 
I won't bore you with all the details, but basically I'm glued to the window here just like it's a TV show. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Good morning. It's day 6, 9 a.m., May 16, 2020. I had a really long sleep. A bit challenging to sleep during the night with all the mice and skunks and stuff running around. But now I'm ready to get on the move again. I'm going to head back down the trail towards um, the Gaw Lake, pick up, pick up a couple sheds I found along the way, and then i got to head straight west of Three Way Swamp through some thick hazel and understory and get myself back to the shoreline of McGaw Lake where my quad is waiting. There it is, McGaw Lake. Made it back to the quad. It's Saturday, May 16th, 2020, and this is day seven of my adventures out here in the bush. This is Jameson Creek behind me. I just climbed down a pretty creek, pretty steep um, ravine there. Found a little bear den, I think. Um, all kinds of wildlife and warblers. I'm trying to get this one on film here. Looks like another yellow rumped warbler. Anyways, spring is in bloom. Some plants are starting to emerge here on the creek banks. Still no fiddleheads, but any day now. So Jamison Creek will lead me into the Roaring River. And I want to get it into the junction of Roaring River and then head up to the west, west bank and see if I can find um, an old mill site again. This is absolutely fantastic place. It's almost like a bit of a cannon. Four feet of ice here. Well, I know as long as I have the sun directly on my back, I'm heading straight north. So I don't really need my map 
for our GPS, walking through this jungle of hazel. Bob's like it's day seven back at the cabin at 6 30 p.m. last night had a black bear come and knock on the door Well, I was just down at the Roaring River getting cleaned up for the night, picking off a couple dozen wood ticks, kind of the nightly routine now for the past two days. The, the, the hot plus 20 days really brought the ticks out. May 17, 2020, day eight. I'm standing here in the eye of the forest at a mineral lick. Lots of activity here.
Fried Creek Chub right out of the Roaring River. I try to eat the, the skin and all to get the most um, value. It's kind of got a nice white and pink meat. Let's see if it tastes like a walleye. Yeah? Tastes like a fish? the end of day 8, about 2 p.m. I'm ready to finally pack up and get out of here. I just really having a hard time leaving this roaring river behind. My lungs have never felt cleaner, my brain clearer. It has been just a great way to reset my mind and soul. So this is only 8 days, if I could say 40 days. Just imagine what that would do. Thank you once again for watching Nighthawk video and I thank the nearly 400 subscribers on my YouTube channel. The numbers keep going up two or three a year and that's that's major progress. Thanks a lot.